Hello, today we're going to dive into the topic of Section 24 tax, the landlord tax. Exactly what is it, uh, how it affects landlords, and crucially, at the end, we're going to tell you uh, what to do about it. Let's get into it. So, number one, what, what is, is Section 24, 24 tax? tax? Say it with a uh, smile on my face, yeah, like I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, well, look, yeah, you, you, you might not know that it was ex it's called Section 24 tax, the landlord tax, uh, tax on turnover. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways that it's been phrased. If you're affected by it, you'll certainly know what it is. Your accountant yeah. might have talked <coughs> to you about it. Um, what, what is it? it? It was introduced by the government uh, seven, eight years ago mm -hmm. now. It tapered in, so it sort of crept up on some landlords. It changes the way t uh, landlords... Um, have tax relief on their profits. Um, it's got significant implications on how, um, on cash flow. You can end up having a phantom profit. It's not a real profit, you've lost money, mm -hmm. but still owing tax because you're being taxed on turnover. Uh, it's, it's possible because uh, you're taxed on your profits on Schedule B or D, or whatever it is, on your self-assessment tax form. So there's a mechanism for the Chancellor to be able to do it. And yeah, it's been a, a bit of a thing for landlords. Yeah. Um, Basically it revolves around mortgages. Yeah, so look, if you're not a mortgage landlord, you probably won't uh, care at all. Um, it, it won't affect you. Uh, the normal way that you would uh, figure out the profit and loss on any business is money in, money out, and profit. And if you aren't a, um, uh, a mortgage landlord, then the money out bit doesn't include interest on a mortgage, so it won't, won't, won't run out at all. But if, it, if you're paying interest on a mortgage, then uh, you're getting either 20% or 40% relief, depending on your 20% or 40% tax uh, player, and uh, you only get a relief, not 100%. So you don't get to claim that entire amount, even though you're spending yeah. the money, you still, your mortgage company still wants the money. Um, so effectively, under Section 24 tax, landlords must pay tax effectively on their entire turnover. Um, it's led to higher tax bills to landlords and sometimes you haven't got the cash to pay for it. True. Um, next, do you have to pay mm. it? Well, the, the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, you, obviously, you said before, taxed on turnover. I mean, you can still claim your ex mm -hmm. other expenses, you know, legal expenses, other, other smaller running costs, but you just can't claim the interest of payment on your mortgage. So, yeah. Mm. Um, it was, it, should we talk about why it was introduced? It was introduced to uh, maybe, ostensibly, uh, level the, the playing field between uh, homeowners and uh, buy to let landlords, because yeah. homeowners can't claim... Uh, however, it does kind of seem to bit of a cash push, grab. Put, put, bit of a cash grab because it pushes to the side mm. the, the fact that landlords, of course, are running a business. Yeah. Um, should we come on to what to do about it? Well, I think that, yeah, so that kind of links into is there a loophole, how has it affected mm. landlords, all that sort of thing. Really, um, it's encouraged most landlords I deal with, professional property investors, to incorporate, right? Mm. So go into so a limited what company. what we've done, so. most of all of our clients do. Yep. Um, once you run so, your property business as a limited company, yeah. at this point in our video, client. we need to say. So at this point, uh, we need to say um, <laughs> we're not we're not tax advisors. Uh, you need <clears> to <throat> speak to a qualified accountant. If you need to speak to a qualified accountant, one of our power team, we can put you in touch. Mm. Click the uh, the, the yeah, talk to us good. button. We'll definitely put yeah. you in touch with us. Um, and the the only thing that I could categorically say is you need to get financial advice on this. So you need to yeah. speak to a qualified uh, property so, accountant. Yeah. And in our experience, what nine out of ten landlords yeah. end up yeah. incorporating, which puts you on a business footing. Uh, so it's good in lots of different ways. There are one or two minor disadvantages. It's slightly more administratively expensive and mm -hmm. complicated, but not much, honestly. Um, it used to be the case that mortgages were slightly more expensive in a limited company. Again, not much at all. Not much more. But yeah, if you're a first-time no, landlord, a little bit a tiny bit. If you're a first-time yeah. landlord, um, you will get a cheaper mortgage in your own personal name. However, once you're past five, or you, maybe four, or four, yeah. you're a portfolio landlord, and whether it's in your personal name or a limited company. Generally speaking, the rates are very, very similar. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so look, by incorporating, uh, becoming a limited company, you would 
uh, pay tax in the way you'd expect to pay tax. Mm. Money in, money out, including the interest, and then that's your profit at the end and you pay tax on that. You could, would of course be Indeed. paying corporation tax, not personal tax. Um, I want to touch a little bit about um, portfolio landlords especially, mm. who want to move their properties from their personal to now that can be a challenge. Company. This can be a whole new um, episode in itself. Mm. Um, there is a precedent for that. It's, it's doable, um, but you can't just move one or two houses yeah. from your personal name into a limited company. It's, it's, not, it's not achievable. You can't do it. Yeah. It needs to be considered a going concern, and I think the rule is about eight um, properties. There's case law yeah. at five, there's case law at eight. I think you'd be safe at eight. You that's what you're, you're definitely need to speak to an accountant account, about that. Your accountant I, will I can you. introduce you to someone, um, well, actually two different accountants that could give you that kind of advice. It's possible for you, mm. um, but it's not really easy. It can take a couple of years. Yeah. The whole premise <clears> there is it's going to be a training business. Mm. So um, if, you, if you only, only mm. own one or two properties, then that's an investment as opposed to being a trading business. Yeah. And incorporating that would be hard. It would uh, be against the rules. Uh, you, well, actually, you could still incorporate, it's just you would have to pay uh, stamp duty and, and capital gains potentially. That's true. And, yeah. and you, could, you could still potentially you can, do it, you transfer can, from one from the other. You can sell your yep. house yep. to your own company. Uh, whereas if you have a going concern, five, six, seven, eight properties, whatever it is, it can be less properties with more work because it's about being a business. Then, it could be. It yep. could be like yeah, uh, I yep. don't know, two, fifteen Big, bed correct, shared houses. Correct. That's why you need yeah, to get good yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah. Um, then you are incorporating business, which is a very uh, standard thing that lots of businesses do. They start as a sole trader, perhaps yeah, yeah. a partnership, then they incorporate further down the line. I personally, I did it in another business. But that, that's just the, yeah, the way yeah. that the decade of trading went. I started it by myself, sole trader, and eventually, by the time I sold it, we we're a limited company. And that's kind of what you'd be doing with a, um, with a with, as a property portfolio by incorporating. So that's a route. You can definitely do that. True. Get good advice. Uh, if you are a landlord just starting out, or you want to be a landlord, you're just buying property number one, really good idea to get the professional advice. Perhaps set up a limited company, at least look into doing it. Sure. And uh, off you go. That will get you around Section 24 tax. And if you're a landlord who already has properties and you want to move them into a limited company, again, even more important to get some good advice. You will find lots and lots of contradictory information on the internet if you put the, uh, the subject in. Uh, people will tell you it's not possible. <laughs> some people will tell you it's very, very easy. Uh, some people will tell you you have to pay stamp duty, capital gains tax. You have to sell the properties from one to another, um, which can be true, but there are no also ways and times that you don't need to do that. Um, the answer is when you see all those contradictory bits of advice, they actually can all be true. You need to get the right yeah. advice and uh, find out what's true for you. Um, hopefully that's been useful, clarified a few things, at least outlined <clears throat> what section 24 tax is and what your next step is. Your next step will be to speak to a dedicated professional. Um, yeah. That's neither of us, by the way, uh, but we can put you in touch. If you want a, the, the blue button, the blue talk to us button, yeah, that's the best way to get in touch. There'll be a link in the description bio, yeah. um, wherever you'll, you are. You'll, you'll either find a link in the bio or you'll find mm. the way to forthelandlords.com and click the blue button and we can put you yeah. in touch with good stuff. All right, people. All right. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye for now. Cheers.